were head of Lambda in 11. So basically, you're down to, you know, using lambdas in your code versus not is is a kind of a, like a uh, uh, a margin or a initial overhead of like three to four milliseconds, and then the marginal cost is well, it's not zero. We'll go and get into that, but it's quite small. It's 0.19 milliseconds per uh, per lambda uh, at per call site to generate the classes compared to the equivalent. Uh, inner inner class. So these these small uh, scaling measure uh, scaling costs like the incremental cost per call site is something we are, you know, they're they're manageable. Th these don't really matter in most applications or mo for most users. But we want to <laughs> we want to reduce them them further. Uh, Don Heidinger uh, earlier mentioned the the uh, experiments with uh, uh, with using Condi. So yeah, if you look at the the translation from 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 a lambda down into uh, a bytecode, you'll get the, there's an invoke dynamic, or first you get the, well, yeah, you get the invoke dynamic for the, uh, for the, let's see, yeah, the, the static method, then you call the uh, apply. So the invoke dynamic retrieves a, an object implementing the functional interface that you, uh, are invoking. So if your lambda is, in this case, a uh, well, basically an int function, you'll get something that or an object that implements int, int function uh, integer, and you'll yeah, well, you give that, you push a, a number to the to the stack, and then you call that object implementing that interface, the int function apply. So it's basically like the magic happens in the invoke dynamic uh, bytecode, getting the uh, getting the bootstrap method to generate something that implements whichever interface uh, you're calling, and that translation then magically gives you you know it can be it can be a singleton in the case that you're non-capturing, and it can be uh, if you're uh, capturing lambda you have to you know every time you generate it or do the invoke dynamic, you'll get a new instance that captures some state. So in the... <sighs> yeah. Let's skip a little bit of the inards here. We can see that the execution part is quite a bit smaller than the uh, uh, overhead of creating the, the Lambda Meter Factory. But if you get get to Condi, then instead of generating using using Indy, you can get rid of uh, all quite a bit of the constant call site stuff. Uh, instead, use a Condi to get the the instance directly if your if your call site is is, is non capturing, and then you'll see which or we experimentally see. Uh, a 25 percent reduction in in overhead uh, which get us closer to the overhead of in their classes uh, this didn't make it for for 12 sadly the uh, link is here in the presentation uh, to the improvement so but yeah, you know still it's it's a it's a it's a nice incremental improvement on the on the overheads maybe maybe we can do even better uh, in the future but yeah uh we do we do use in the form other things um than than uh, than lambdas today in the jdk in java 9 we introduced uh, the indification of string concatenation uh which has been talked uh or presented about by for example well alexis shipolo who's the main author of the feature uh did a talk in here at the focus uh 3 years ago uh and typically, it kind of like it. it uh, the result of string concatenation is to rather than have Java C uh, do a string builder append chain, you uh, you delegate to a uh, invoke dynamic call site, get a um, well some some object back that you then do the concatenation on, which uh, you know you take takes the number of arguments that you're uh, that you're getting from from uh, dynamically uh, the problem of course as ever when you're using these dynamic features is the startup overhead or one problem um, 
and the uh, the cost of uh, of doing uh, hello uh, concatenation with with this new dynamic translation rather than the old inline translation uh, is well substantial on the initial one, uh, and then it's slightly uh, slightly more uh, on each subsequent. But then it pans out if your if if all your stink concatenations are following the same uh, pattern, they will go into the same kind of method handle uh, method handle setup chain. So so you won't see a scaling. It will it will pan out and be more or less uh, zero overhead in the in, in the end. But the overheads are still there and they're quite measurable. So well, how do you how do you get to the bottom of all this? Well. Uh, string concatenation. If you if you profile it and get a flame graph of the uh, uh, of the of the execution, well, you'll see that it's doing a lot of things in in Java Lang invoke method handles. There's um, quite a bit of uh, uh, drop arguments. There's a quite a lot of fold arguments, and and I'm sure this one says filter arguments. Uh, or maybe insert arguments. Uh, so there's a lot of like. High level or low level, depending on <laughs> your point of view, uh, operations being done here. That doesn't seem to be anything related to string concatenation, but it's kind of like it's the it's the building blocks to create the method handle that defines the operation of concatenating concatenating a string together. So it's kind of like you're you're uh, getting the arguments there in place for uh, you know the placeholder arguments, and then you get the method handle. In the end, that when you call it with a certain number of arguments, it will put put all those pieces together and execute the code that basically gives you a byte array, fills in that byte array, wraps that in a string, and, get, and returns the string. So it's nothing magic doing magic in magic about this, but it's it's kind of convoluted on on the bootstrap side. Uh, I used a tool that I wrote myself. Uh, <laughs> Called uh, called byte stacks, I have it on GitHub, and it uh, it pulls down uh, flame graph uh, from uh, from Brandon Gregg, and uh, and then I use that with a debug build of of the JDK to uh, trace exactly every bytecode executed uh, in interpret in, in by the interpreter. Then I can p then you know pipe that through byte stacks, which reads through all the bytecode, reconstitutes the uh, Call stacks generate that into into uh, into the flame graph tool. So it's it's just a, just a few scripts and, and some Java. Uh, but still, we uh, we have made some progress in in cutting down on the on the overheads of uh, string cat concat as well. Uh, on the initial overhead, uh, we're down like fifty percent in uh, Java twelve uh, compared to Java eleven. Uh, Basically, well, a few micro optimizations in the string concat factory implementation itself, realizing that some of the drop and then fold operations were could be replaced by a filter operation. So if only we had a method to do that with a combiner, so I added that method. Uh, now, now for a <laughs> uh, for a project that is being in development for uh, future releases, the Java C compiler intrinsics. I know uh, Hannes and Jim Lasky are eager to add a few of those methods that I've added in internally to do filtering and foldering with with combiners that can pick pick arguments a little bit from from random or arbitrary positions in the parameter thing. It, it's no magic. It's just you know uh, combining a few of the of the low level constructs in the Java Lang invoke method handles interface to do the same thing, but with few fewer intermediaries, so you get fewer lambda forms uh, intermediaries. So doing that uh, could cut down the number of intermediaries and, and meth lambda forms gen needed to generate a few of these string concats by 40% or so. And then, well, I realized also uh, that in cases where where arguments are being repeated and in string concat, they are usually kind of repeated. You're either they are either strings or objects, or they are integers or something. So you can you can simplify the expressions a little bit and see that they are often repeat arguments. And if you have repeat arguments, 
why am I doing the same operation over and over, not uh, compound operations on you know every argument in some places? So, so I found some general purpose optimizations uh, to the method handle uh, implementation that uh, allows for. I don't have the numbers here, but in, you know, in synthetic cases, I have a case where I'm generating a string concat over 255 arguments, and it takes six seconds or something to bootstrap the first time. Uh, with the optimization in place, it takes 200 milliseconds. So it's, it can be quite substantial uh, improvements to startup. Uh, yeah, I have a link somewhere in my s blogs, some, I think. Anyhow, that's, that's the end of the presentation I had from uh, JVMLS last year. I have here a couple. So I have 10 minutes. Ooh. I was planning on doing a little bit of uh, a tangent uh, over into how do I profile native things in, in, in the JDK, because I, with my slides, I've shown a lot of the Java code. So uh, right, I'll drop out to a terminal, I think. Oh. Uh. Oh. Do I have VPN? No, I don't have. I think, uh, oh, I don't need VPN, sorry. Uh, so uh, if I have a, if I want to uh, look at what the, uh, what the VM does during startup, uh, more, more, more in a profile sense. The problem generally is that, well, your profiler is like perf or whatever. They, they are sampling. Uh, they, they, um, they sample only so many events uh, per, per second. Uh, so, you, so if you run something that runs for less than 100 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds, um, what you sample won't be very representative of what happens in that kind of time critical uh, phase. So you want something that uh, you want to, you want to trick it into showing more of what it's doing. So the, a tool that I've been very happy with is uh, is Valgrind, which is an instrumentation. It's called a simulator. Uh, so it it runs your application. Uh, and simulates it through a, a virtual computer, and then uh, records all the events. So it gives you um, uh, uh, very uh, well, of course, biased. Uh, it has all, all manners of problems, um, but uh, yeah, it's if you're on if you're on Linux, uh, it's well simply you have a Valgrind tool. You uh, uh, can let's see. You can well, you can pick out the uh, the call grind tool. And there's there's a couple of uh, problems if you run with uh, class data sharing. That means that you have to add a few of these uh, <laughs> weird flags to uh, put the um, space minimum address at some some range so it doesn't you know interfere with the, with the class data sharing archive and such. So ignore most of the flags if you want to try this at home. Just copy copy paste this command line uh, and this tool and this well this little utility script then uh, takes well whatever you give it to it so if I want to run my uh, my uh, JDK uh, my what I don't know when I built this one so uh, let's see what it what what it does uh, let's just run version uh, you see so well, simulating things takes a lot of time. Uh, and there it goes. So, well, eight, 85 million events later. Uh, another tool then available on, on your favorite Linux uh, of choice is cache grind, K cache grind, uh, which takes a, uh, one of these call grind profiles, consume it, and woo, it's fast, uh, gives you a profile. Uh, Load load that up, and you you'll have something that. Well, it's a typical uh, profile interface, but kind of detailed if you drill down into it. So you can see things uh, like the Java main thread starting up, and uh, if you dig into that, you'll. Oh. 
Can we just split so we can get a little bit more information on screen? You'll see what the Java main thread does. It uh, goes into the create, create VM and uh, uh, you have the init globals and all these funny things. And oh, it initializes G1 collected heap. There's the template interpreter interpre initialize. 3.7 million instructions to in to generate the interpreter. That's uh, worth getting rid of, um, <laughs> maybe. So this actually kind of maps very very nicely one to one with uh, with the number of instructions you would see running uh, running this through perf. Uh, it of course has its own biases and you know might not might not reflect the costs uh, or whatever. Uh, but you can you can usually find find fun things. Uh, one fun thing we did find just you know. Pulling up this, uh, looking at this tool a little bit, Nils in the compiler team asked me, like, can you can you look at C2 and or the register allocator and see if you find something? And well, I found a reg mask colon colon size taking uh, 1.5 million instruction during startup. So I, I well I'll go into that one. It, this is from uh, uh, 11 dot 11 build 19, so it's a little bit old. Uh, I don't see the source code, but I can look, look into the machine code representation and see, okay, what is it doing? It's doing a lot of branching and moving and, uh, well, something doesn't seem very efficient. So look, looking at the code, I don't have the original source code here, but seeing that it was a, it, this was basically a population count over a 32-bit integer uh, being done in a very naive fashion uh, using, you know, uh, an, an algorithm that uh, shifts 16 bits, uh, checks if it's uh, zero or not, and then adds whatever. So, well, uh, there in academia there have been better software uh, software algorithms uh, in place for quite some time. And, um, well, I, I did an experiment. So these 1.5 million instructions, I wrote a patch taking the, uh, well, this was an algorithm available in, uh, in in literature since since the late 90s, I think. Uh, picked that one instead, uh, ran that through the uh, through the hoops, and could get the the reg mask uh, size method to run in about half the. Where did I find it? Where did I find it? Uh, well. <laughs> Uh, I think Stack Overflow has pointers to it, yes, but there are, uh, huh? The JDK, the JDK has it. We had the uh, the same algorithm here we have in Java Lang Integer, for example, to uh, do the count. Then I kind of Google, of course, maybe find some pointers on, on Stack Overflow, and you know there are there are a few var variations of it in Hackers Delight or whatever. Reality, as well. As I also point out in the in the code comment, the uh, built-in pop count, for example, and GCC intrinsic would be great to use. Sadly, the built-in pop count uh, on our build platform picks a 64-bit implementation that was actually twice as slow. Uh, so, <laughs> for the build platform that we currently have, we were better off with the software-optimized algorithm for 32-bit. I don't know why GCC. Uh, because the UCC has built-ins for 32 bits and 64 bits, so we, but but for some reason they they felt that they only had to have uh, one implementation on modern hardware, uh, of course, and that's an, that's a little bit of a performance observation. On modern hardware, you could be able, you could probably use uh, a built-in uh, pop count instruction, uh, for example, Intel. Since uh, I don't know if it's Sanderbridge or later. Uh, you have a you know one one instruction that does this in hardware, uh, so there's chisel for it that is even faster. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, this is just an example of something you, we dug up and saw that. Well, uh, in the previous, it was kind of like uh, out of the if you if you sort on self, this was one of the hottest functions in in the native code. And after uh, it's way down the list, uh, just by a simple uh, application of a of an algorithm that has been, you know, in the public domain since uh, since the early early two thousand at least. 
I think that's uh, about wraps it up. So any questions or comments or Ron Pressler, get the uh, mic. So uh, just about profiling. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever tried? So you taught me how to use a uh, 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 call grind, and, and it works great. Uh, but sometimes for mixed uh, Java and native code, oh, yeah. uh, I saw two profilers: uh, Honest Profiler and Async Profiler. Async have, Profiler, have, yeah. Have you, Have you tried them? I I use Async Profiler quite a bit when I when I look at. Uh, uh, when I look at JMH microbenchmarks, where where time is spent mostly in native sections, because if you use JMH and the built-in perf asm profile is very nice. Uh, if if all your hotspots are in Java code, uh, if it's if if it's in native code, it's kind of like there's no there's no uh, you know there's no disassembly for for this section. So I don't know. Uh, in those cases, async profiler is very nice to you know you run your your image benchmarks, then you run your then you just point async profiler to to uh, to whichever process just just tune your parameters so that it long runs for a long time and hook 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 the async profiler up to your micro benchmark. It's nice, works for any benchmark or any workload. So uh, yeah, it's it's a really cool tool and it gives you flame graphs if you ask it uh, just like the ones that I get with uh, with uh, byte stacks thanks so are you considering moving generating the interpreter into the shared archive uh, that would be one interesting uh, thing yeah uh, but then again it's uh, it's three point Seven million instructions uh, out of eighty, ninety million or something. So it's it's less than four percent of the bootstrap overhead for a for a dash version. Would it give us something? Sure. Uh, and we, I mean, there are there are, there are a lot of you know low hanging fruit here to uh, just just go grab. And anyone anyone involved in the OP NDK are of course welcome to optimize all this. Uh, it's it's quite a quite a, quite a lot you know there's it's a there's a lot of time investment just to get rid of two two milliseconds